In this tutorial, I wanted to show some tips and tricks about how to use the wind tunnel and specific about the 3D simulation. So first of all, there's some few things that should be done before you start up the wind tunnel. That is, you should have a mask ground object so the wind doesn't blow underneath the building. So if that is in order, you can start up the wind tunnel. Usually I also maximize the window so I can see more of what is going on inside the wind tunnel. And before I go in and change from 2D to 3D, I want to specify the analysis grid. So I click on analysis grid. I'm not going into detail about tips and tricks about this. This is shown in another video. So here I just want to specify numbers I've just tried before creating this video so I know it works. There's some uh, new stuff in the beta 3 version of Versailles that is you cannot go too high of the voxel numbers so it will always try to aim for the maximum number of cells. For example if I try to go down to 4 then it will jump to to the maximum cells that, that can be simulated. So when this is done I just click OK and then the analysis grid will get these new dimensions. Before you're starting simulating with the 3D function you should specify the velocity, the wind speed and you should also specify the angle. In this case I want to have it in 90 degrees. Keep the velocity as default and position, that's the height from the ground level. I want to have it in 14 in this case. So when I specify these four things, I start up the 3D simulation. It will take a little bit longer time if you have a slow machine, so that's why there is this option of only having it in 2D, but if you want to have it more accurate result, you should definitely use the 3D simulation. So I just click here in 3D flow analysis, and then it will run for a bit to be finished. And after some few minutes, it will have simulated the 3D airflow, I typically turn off the display values in 3D because I think it's annoying to see in 3D the wind speeds. So if I go down to the 3D volumetric, it's not shown at the moment, but if I turn this on, it will turn on the point cloud. And if I want to see these uh, 3D visuals styles, I should turn on the 2D data slice up here on the 2D grid slice. And the point cloud function looks something like this. I don't think this is uh, that useful. I prefer to have, for example, the XY slides. And this works in, in, in that sense that it shows all the values between 0 and the middle of the scale that is defined. And to see the scale, you have to turn on the 2D slice again and see the scale here. You could lock it by click on the pause button and go to data display and down here we could say it should give me the values between 0 and 15. So when the threshold is 0 0.5, then it's around 7.5 meter per second. Just turn this off again. So what we see here is the wind speed between 0 and 7.5. And if I want to see, for example, the wind speed between 0 and 5, then it should take one third. So that should be something like 0.33 and apply. So we have these colors. There we have wind speed below 5 meter per second. And this way we can examine the, the wind simulation in another way than the slice. Can be a little bit difficult to understand and see the difference. You could also change the colors if that helps down in the data display. Typically I use blue, green and red. I could also choose just grayscale but sometimes the colors is actually quite good to see the difference between buildings and the wind simulation. Another one that is also quite useful, that is the ISO surface. It's actually showing the same thing, but it just create a surface in between this threshold. And said before, between 0 and 5 meter per second. So inside this surface, or underneath this one, here we have wind speed that is below. So if I instead pulling up to two thirds, 10 meters per second, then the ISO surface will of course be larger because it have a 
greater span between the zero and the threshold value, in this case 10 meters per second. So we can look around inside the model to see what is the wind speed and where do we have wind speed below certain criteria. And last, there is the flow lines. Just zoom a little bit out here. It creates lines, as we can see here. And if I click on flow line settings, then I can maximize the number of lines. Press apply, and then it will create more lines into the window. There's also some other stuff I can play around with. Could maximize the boundary height if I want to do that. I could also change the height of the these body arrows, these ones. And there's some other stuff you can play around with. So just to turn this off, then we can go inside the model and see how the different wind flows is. So this is another way of investigate the design and see how is the wind going around the different buildings we have created. But unfortunately the only way we can export these result is just taking print screens. So if you want to store this result you just have to press on print screen on the keyboard or use the sniping tool. So to summarize in this tutorial instead of using 2D we can use 3D and when we turn off the 2D slides we have better option of showing these 3D volumetric styles where some is more or less useful than others and I think this ISO surface is maybe one of the best ones that give a 3D view over the selected threshold of wind speed.